Jason Van Dyke out of prison, being released under the cover of night after serving a little over three years behind bars for the murder of Laquan McDonald. And that sparked outrage and protests over his short sentence. And we have team coverage for you tonight. Mike Lowe is down at the Federal Plaza where protesters have gathered. But first, Julian Cruz takes a look back at how we got here. Julian. Well, Ray, as you know, from the moment he entered the prison system, secrecy surrounding Jason Van Dyke's location due to safety and security reasons, the Illinois Department of Corrections initially withholding details about which prison Van Dyke was released from, but state officials later confirming Van Dyke was released from downstate Taylorville Correctional Center. Under Illinois law, uh, with good behavior, Van Dyke had to just uh, do a good job of, of behaving himself, and that cut his sentence down to about 50%. WGN legal analyst Paul Lisnick describing the calculation and how Jason Van Dyke served so little time. Body cam and dash cam videos from Chicago police capturing Van Dyke firing 16 shots into Laquan McDonald in 2014, killing the Chicago teenager. The delayed video release a year later igniting outrage and emotional protests across the city. The 2018 murder trial leading to a second degree murder conviction and 16 counts of aggravated battery. But in a controversial sentencing phase, Cook County Judge Vincent Gaughan handing down just over a six year sentence to the outrage of many. Judge Gaughan took advantage of the perfectly legal power he had to essentially run whatever sentence he was going to assign with the uh, battery charges tied to the second murder charges. During his abbreviated stay behind bars, Van Dyke for a time moved into a federal detention center in Connecticut. And according to records from the Illinois Prisoner Review Board, when Van Dyke's release was approved in September of last year, we know that he was being held at the minimum security Taylorville Correctional Center near Springfield. He'll be under supervised release for three years. Legal analysts like our own Paul Lisnick say federal civil rights charges are unlikely, but there's no statute of limitations on civil rights cases involving a fatality. The possibility of a civil rights charge here absolutely is possible, and that most likely is what Merrick Garland and the DOJ is weighing if they indeed are weighing anything. Now here locally, spokespeople for the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Northern District of Illinois declining to comment. In the newsroom, Julian Cruz, WGN News. Thank you, Julian.